Oh my gosh, dude. Tank! Good morning, good morning, back again. You get to see my mug for about another 18 to 20 minutes, but today it's gonna be worth it, I promise you that. Because today, we're driving over the Tennessee River right now. Uh-huh, what am I gonna be doing? I'm going over to Lake Wilson here in Alabama. And I'm gonna fish with my good buddy David. David Shear. David is a small mouth expert. When I say small mouth expert, I'm talking potentially the biggest bag that I've ever caught of smallmouth today. I'm talking 24, 25, 28 pounds. I'm talking a potential of catching a seven or eight pound bass. Look, smallmouth on that river right there, the Tennessee River. This show is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be really cool. You're gonna learn a few things and you're hopefully gonna see some donkey smallmouth. Man, appreciate you taking me out today. It's a, uh, it's a special deal, man. I, I've known David now for I don't know five or six years or so, and and uh, I've just seen all the pictures. You know, he talks he talks about all these big fish, and there's a lot of guys in the world that talk about catching all these giant fish, and then they can't back it up. But this guy backs it up because he shows me the photos, and they're tanks. So we're gonna have a simple challenge today. I'm not challenging you because you're like the master, okay, out here. I'm I'm just a little student trying to learn something. What do you think our challenge should be? What do you think? Yeah, probably 25 pounds. 25 pounds what? is a solid day. Brown what? fish, anyway. That's not including the green. That'd be the biggest bag I've ever caught, my friend, on smallmouth. Well, 30 if we're lucky, but I won't. I won't push it. Let's get the boat in the water. Smallmouth. I'm trying to think what my biggest bag of smallmouth is. We did a big one at Rainy Lake, like yeah, 22. I saw about 22 at Rainy. 22 I think. pounds, and then I did, I did 22 pounds in an FLW tournament at uh, St. Clair. I went way up the river, the Detroit River, and caught them. Uh, big ones on a jerk bait. And my biggest smallmouth. This is a neat story. My biggest smallmouth ever, 614. I'm waiting on a scale, 614. But it was a seven, like two or three. As I'm trying to land it, no net in the boat, practice day, a lot of current like this. I'm fighting the fish around, it throws up a perch that was that big. The perch floats on down the river, and I finally land the fish weighing 614. I'm trying to find that perch, right? <laughs> I'm like, the perch weighs like four ounces at least, so it would have been like a 7, 2, or 3, for sure. So 6, 614 is my biggest smallmouth. Well, we'll have to get lucky to do that. Yeah, I know, 7 pounders hard to come by, but the legitimate shot at 25 pounds is a doable is a doable task. We we had a we had a scrawny six seven Saturday. The fish was plenty long to be seven and a half, but it just did not have the girt. Okay, here we go. First cast right here. Uh oh. Uh oh. It doesn't feel big. It's a little old run, but it's a fish. We got a run. All right. A little broke broke back run. Stick him in the box. We gotta weigh it. I got a bag. I hope he doesn't make it. If he makes it, we're gonna have to have a couple sevens to make up the difference. Yeah. Alright, number one. It just 
stopped. Oh, I got a big one, dude. He's on the ball. giant, but I don't know. Ho, 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 ho! It's not a fiver, but it's a solid fish. Oh, my goodness, dude. What are you talking about? That's a tank. Wow. It's catch, hey. it, catch and release. Wow. Check that tongue, too, when you get that out. See a patch? No, no. Pure Smalley. Look at that, guys. That is awesome. All right, that one goes in the box for sure. What just happened? That was crazy. All right, guys, let me show you what we're fishing with today. You know, line size is real important when you're fishing in current swim baits. You know, right now, a lot of current, fishing about 11, 12 foot of water. 12 pound diameter is really important. This is the new P-Line Tactical. And why is line diameter so important? Because the thicker the line, the, the, the harder it is gonna be to get to the bottom. You wanna match that line up perfectly so you can get that bait to swim subtly through that current down on the bottom. That 12 pound is matched up good for this depth. I've got on the EVX rod, this is the Akuma Carbon. It's a 7.2, it's a swim, swim jig chatterbait rod, great for swim baits as well. And got it on an eight to one reel. Now this little bait, pretty cool. Little Jinko bait, a little half ounce head on it. And, uh, and that's our setup. And basically just casting it out there and just, you know, getting that right speed, that right retrieve. And you get that matched up just right, big fish like that bite. Yeah, this spot lock is unbelievable. You've heard me talk about it a bunch. I can't stop talking about it. We get to the spot, we hit spot lock, never have to touch the cold motor. It's like fishing on an island. Like I don't have to worry about boat position or anything. It's crazy. If you fish in current, you definitely need the Minn Kota Ultrax. That's a great, the best thing ever. If you guys are ever filming a TV show and you don't want to get off your spot, you just get your boy when you get hung up to go take your rod and go get it. Uh-oh, and he's hooked up. Oh my gosh, you dig it? I don't know yet. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. It's a good one. It's a good one. Oh, what? What? That's all I can say. I, I don't even know what to say. Giant slippery. I, I don't even know what to say, dude. How about that, guys? That's 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 like a six, dude. Let me see. That's a six. That's a six. That's a six pounder. Six pound smallmouth. What? The problem is I don't have a rod. <laughs> That's my only pro All right, so tip number two, if you're gonna do the, give your ride to your buddy to go get unhung, have another one to fish with, because now I can't fish. If we get five of those, yeah, we, we would have the mega bag. That would be 30. It's so far, a six and a five, and like a little broke back to it. And a little, little dink. A little dinker. Here comes my rod. Special delivery. Thank you, sir. Okay, what do I need to throw, my friend? Yonder. Six. That was a bit. That's, might be over six, dude. That's a thick, thick, heavy one. These fish weigh more up here. That's that's why I'm glad they're starting to show up again because I've been down there scratching for 20 to 22 pounds when you, you come up here and catch 25 to 27 pounds off of one waypoint up here. What? That, that's, the, that's the word for today is what? You know, David, you've been doing this so long. You live here on the lake and you've got this really fine tune out here. What, what's uh, what's the biggest one you've ever caught out here? The biggest brown one is my scales only say 715, but they're a little light. It's about 81. Wow. And, and you caught a big mean mouth too, didn't you? Yeah, that's her. That's her. That biggest pure small mouth is only seven pounds, but my three biggest are 76, 712, and 81. God. And those are all mean mouths. And all off the same exact spot and the same exact bait. See, David, he fishes these tournaments up here, so there's a lot of times this time of the year and through the spring, he'll have a five fish limit that weighs 27 to 28 pounds. Well, we'll, we'll put it this way: in the 
in the three days they had the classic a few years ago on Gunnersville that yeah. Randy Howell won with yeah. 68 eight of those right. piddly little green fish. <laughs> I had 84 11 those three days. 84 11. See, Randy, you give, when you grow up, you're going to be as good as him one day, right? When you grow up, one day. And a slow day when it's right is 27 pounds. That's a bluebird post frontal day. Wow. And, and an average day is about 28 4, 28 5. What? And a, and a really good day is, you know, 30 to 31. All right, so here's the deal. We already have three, three, three big ones. That looks weird. Looks like I'm shooting your bird. But anyways, I'm not doing that. I'm just holding three fingers. We have two tanks and one small one. When I say tanks, I'm talking giant smallmouth. Yeah. Look, look at this smallmouth, guys. That is a monster. What? This hat is definitely fitting for today. There he is. Yeah, I don't know yet. Oh my God. It's not a giant, but it's a good one. Oh, it's a giant, dude. That's, that's crazy. Oh not my giant, goodness. Not a giant for me. Not a giant for you, but that's a giant for me, my friend. That's one we want to call the belly. on tournament day. That's the belly on that one. <laughs> my boy David right there. Right there, dude. That'll work. That's a good one. All right. Put her in there and get in there while they're going. Oh my gosh, dude. Tank! Here she comes. Oh my goodness, dude. We're almost there, my friend. That's We're almost there. Oh, that hook fell out. That's one you want to call on tournament day. I have no words. I have, no, let me cast. Let me cast. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go. Let me cast. Here's his next. One more, dude. I think we're there. So, this is a special place. And what David's got figured out here is even more special. I mean, he's got this spot so dialed in, or this part of the lake so dialed in, with these rocks and little current swings and different things. And every day is a little different, you know, depending on how many units you're pulling through the through the dam, wind and all that type of stuff. We're not catching a lot, but as you've seen, I mean, these are monster smallmouth. I mean, that right there, that's trophy fishing. One more big one, we'll be close to our goal. Oh no, it's gonna have to take both yours. <laughs> I'll take off that side. <laughs> it ain't no way. Alright. Alright. We'll be back. See you, Brandon. That looks sweet, dude. I've never seen the boat in the water. Yeah, that's the first time. They did good on the raft. You see it on the trailer. I mean, it looks good on the trailer, but in the water. It's pimping. One more big fish, we're calling it. We're gonna go, we're gonna put them in the bag, we're gonna weigh them, and hopefully they're gonna weigh 25 pounds. Oh, I got a big one, dude. Of course you do, I just cast. Oh yeah, it's a giant. It's a gigantic one, A good one, dude. head shaker? Yes. It's a giant, bro, look at that. <laughs> well, wrong species. Go home. Oh, that was a six pounder. Probably seven, actually. That's just a little drum for here. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to get him in, trying to get my in. Better hurry because that's a good head shake right there. Coming Come on, baby. Coming up. Coming up. Oh, not that, big, not that big, but that's okay. We get rid of the little jacked up one. <laughs> We're close. 
We're close. We're very close. We've got just a few more minutes. We're going to bring them in, weigh them in, and let them go. All right, guys, i got to give a good shout-out right now. You know, I'm running dual 12 Garmin 12s right now. That's what's on my unit. Two big units. And this Boat Logic is a really heavy-duty graph mount. And I have it here on my console. I can have both my units side by side. Everything's good and secure. I mean, this thing is really, really tight. I have it also on the front of my boat. Uh, I talked a little bit about it in the last video, but having a really secure, solid mount for your graphs is real important. And having these two units like this, you know, it enables me to have my side image on. It allows me to have my clear view on. allows me to have my map on. And all these different um, screens on my GPS allows me to really, really fine-tune that spot. So it is an advantage. Uh, I, you know, it, it's just a big deal. So if you're looking for a graph mount, check out Boat Logics. Right at Chattanooga, these guys love bass fishing, and they build a really, really good mount. Well, man, I don't know if we have 25, but we're all over it. We're going to go in the little harbor, get out of the wind, weigh these fish, let them go, and uh, we might have done it, guys. Pretty cool. Definitely some of the biggest smallmouth I've ever seen. David's the man. There's that one right there. Number one. Number two. Dude, I don't know, man. Oh my goodness gracious, dude. What? What? Dude, that's that's gotta be that's gotta be. That's a big fish. That's gotta be. Oh gosh, that's heavy. Yes, dude, look, look, 2577, guys, 2577. Here, hold that. Oh my goodness. We did it, dude. Let's pour them back in real quick. Let's pour them back in, we'll let them go in a minute. Let's pour them all in there. Un. That's all I gotta say. What? They showed up. Dude. Not many, but they showed up. Dude, I wish. I mean, that was in like three hours, guys. I wish I had all day to fish here today with you because we could just keep catching them like that. Unbelievable. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. David, thank you so much for all that, dude. I learned a lot. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it. Tank Smallmouth, Wilson Lake, Alabama. We're coming back to you again in a few days with something else cool. Thanks for subscribing. Drop some comments. Share the video, guys. Help us grow. We we'll appreciate you. I'm out. Bam!